Sharon and I have uh, a great conversation. We started chatting last week and something came up that we just felt we had to share with everyone else. Now, Sharon Adam is uh, an attorney. She's based out in Oakland, so she's in the San Francisco Bay Area, and she primarily deals with intellectual property. And our conversation started off on risk management because one of the things that I look at when I'm working with companies or with business owners in general, whether it's a startup or whatever, if they're looking to expand and get some momentum, we've got to look at the risk first. So I just wanted to share this first. And then Sharon and I are just going to have a whole conversation with you about the, the risk factors that people aren't necessarily aware of in business and how important they are to get right the first time so that it saves you time and saves you money. So here's the screen I'm going to share with you around what we're looking at. So when I'm starting off, risk factors are really important because we don't want to amplify risk when we're growing a business. And I've seen some horrendous things happen in business. And this is how the conversation with Sharon and I started out, because risk includes our, intellect, our intellectual property. So one of the assessments that I talk about is what services have they got? What products have they got? And we build the risk foundation and action plan all at the same time. So it's, a, it's an ongoing process. So I wanted to bring Sharon into the conversation. I'm going to stop sharing the screen now. And I wanted to bring Sharon into the conversation because we had such an amazing conversation that it's really important that you hear about some of the different things that we look at. So when a business is starting out or they've got a new idea, one of the things that I ask them to do straight from the get-go is double check and make sure that they can get the domain name. There's absolutely no point in starting out a business, going down the road, and then finding later on that you can't get the domain name. Now, on top of that, that's how the conversation started. So I'm gonna pass it on to Sharon because then it goes into the, the, the trademark side of things and the intellectual property side of things. So Sharon, uh, what, what do you wanna say about the risk and what happens with websites, particularly in products and services? Okay, well, thank you, Elaine, for having me on your uh, podcast, YouTube channel. And um, to answer your question, uh, it's a very, very important. And, you know, getting the domain name up front is not necessarily even, I agree, it's important, but I just want to share a story about yes, somebody that did exactly that. Yeah. Okay. So they worked with somebody, a branding company. This is a client I had. They worked with a branding company. They thought they were doing everything right. They got the packaging, they got the brand name, they got the logo, they got the domain name. They developed their product and actually had it up on their website for sale. So they had done all of this on this domain name. And then they, then they filed the trademark application. And then they found out that even though they had the .com domain name, uh, there was a substantial objection by another company to, to, to this uh, business getting this trademark. Right. And then you think of all the time and money and effort that's gone into that for then to have the whole kibosh put on that because somebody else already has the trademark. So what would you recommend that people do, Sharon, when they're starting out as the very first step um, to, to prevent risk, to save money and save time? Okay. The very first step when, when they're working with a consulting company like you or a branding company, is to identify, I would say, three to five names, brand names for your product or service that, that, that uh, the client wishes to go forward with. And the reason I say three to five, and they should be somewhat distinct, is because there's many, many um, trademark applications being filed now. So oftentimes, even if it seems somewhat unique, I, I can help people by doing a search up front and then searching for that name plus the specific goods or services uh, within the US Patent and Trademark Office database. Yeah. And so the reason why I said to get three to five names is because if, if one comes up, oh, that, that's gonna be problematic, maybe one of the other ones um, can go forward because you probably know from working with clients that people often get very, very, very attached to a name. And that's why I say three to five, because, you know, at least you have some you like up front. 
Yes. You know, maybe it's not your favorite, but if it's going to be a huge problem to go forward with your favorite, then, you know, people could go forward with a different one. Yes, it, it, it's interesting, the emotional attachment that people put into some of their business ventures. And the passion it shouldn't be necessarily attached to the name. The passion should be driven into the product and what the product serves or the service, what the service serves, and then looking to distinguish the name from there. And one of the things that I know you do, and I, I think it's so important that that is not a costly thing. You do that as a flat fee, correct? Mm -hmm. So yes, that people I... can search for that. Yes. Yeah, they can go to my website, which is adamslaw.biz. And um, I, I do provide that service. Yeah. Um, again, that, 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 that can be, you know, I, it's not that expensive in the overall. If people are going to be bringing a product to market, it's actually a relatively minor cost yeah. if you're already working with a branding company. Yes, uh, yeah, and but I, then I, it's like, well, that then led to another conversation about that. Well, did you know around products and services and retail? Yes. And, and there was a whole, we had, we had such an amazing conversation that that's why it was that this is important to share because not many people know these things. Yeah, well, let, let me just take one step back and explain just briefly what a trademark is because a that's trademark- a Yes, a trademark is identified with specific goods or services. So like, for example, the difference between a trademark and copyright, okay, where copyright could be like a book, okay, but a book is not a specific trade or service. So a trademark is identified with a specific goods or service, that it's a brand name. So just have to keep that in mind. Right. Yeah. So do you have an example of something like that that would be a good uh, example of a product that is a brand name that would be trademarked? Uh, the wow. one I can think of is like Hoover, you know, or for sure. Yeah, that I mean that everyone thinks of a Hoover. I, they're called a Hoover in England. They're called a I vacuum am. over here, but they're right. called a Hoover in England, <laughs> which is a, I mean that's a brand name. Yes, absolutely. Xerox, for example, is a completely made up word. And when people say Xerox now, they think, you know, the copy machine. Yeah. Kodak, another completely made up word is Kodak. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And then ju just maybe to give a little bit more on um, trademarks. So those, for example, are made up words which have the highest level of protection. And then another type of trademark that would have a high level of protection would be, for example, the word coach for handbags, because it's not Yes. It's a word. It's not a made up word, but it has nothing to do with handbags. So right. those are the kind of trademarks that have the highest level of protection. And again, if you're thinking of a brand name, <laughs> it's good to, to think along those lines. I have to share you, something with you. Yes. Coach. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Very successful brand name. Together. <laughs> Oh dear, I, I, I digress a little bit. I thought that was quite funny to, to share that. Yes, definitely. <laughs> but it's a prime example of, you know, the coach purse or the coach handbag, um, and then the coaching services, totally different, exactly. totally different. So Right, for example, if, you, if, if people wanted to have a name like a Coaching 101 or something like that as a brand name, that would be a very difficult trademark potentially to get, or if you got it to, to keep other people from using, because it's yeah. so kind of generic. Yeah. And, and I think that's the other part to think about when you're doing something like this, there's certain things that you want to protect and then other things, it becomes pointless because the cease and desist or the effort that goes into it, just pick something unique, make up your own word, like, you know, like they have done, as you say, with like Xerox, you know, make up your own word that um, you can trademark and then it's much easier to deal with. Now, what about the other conversation that we had around products and services where they have a retail store yeah. and then they have a retail store online because that was another conversation that I think is very pertinent. And, and the whole point of this is to create people's awareness yeah. so that they're aware of the problem and then they can decide whether or not that's something that they um, have a problem or have a challenge with, or if it's something that they just feel they can ignore. Right, okay, so um, trademarks are, are analyzed by their goods or services. 
So for example, another kind of example is Apple computers. And you know, there used to be back in the day, Apple Music. And that was allowed to coexist because they were different. Okay, they were different. So that, that's all trademarks are analyzed by their classification of goods or services. And your point is, um, yes, it's very important to get that correct because there's a rule within the US Patent and Trademark Office that once a trademark application is filed, it cannot be expanded. The definition of goods or services cannot be expanded. So to get to our specific conversation that we had before, yeah. uh, for example, sometimes people, they're selling clothing. They think they're selling clothing, which is a good in class 25, and it would have to have a label or a tag, like a piece of clothing. But what they're really doing is, and what they really want to do is have an online retail store that sells clothing. And, and those are completely different because one is a service, an online retail store is considered a service, whereas right. an actual piece, piece of clothing is a good. And you can't, ex once it's filed under clothing, you cannot then amend it to be an online retail store selling clothing. So, so that I think is just fascinating and why that conversation appealed to me so much because now they're aware of that, they, they can change how they look at what they're doing but it's also a case of companies evolve and they create a product and maybe they create the product and they trademark it and then go sell it online or maybe they sell it online and they want to take it into a store exactly. it's two different categories right exactly very very true yeah that's absolutely true yeah so i, I think this conversation and we'll just keep it short and sweet so that people mm -hmm. can understand and, and sort of take in what we've just been speaking about um, but if you want to get in touch with us the information will be at the end of the video as well um, but you can reach out to Sharon Adams and she's given her email address would you like to give it again one more time on your website Sharon my website is adamslaw.biz.biz there you go so had a chance to get hold of Sharon if you've got any questions there and I think most of you know how to get hold of me um, my name's Elaine Betts of GoFar Consulting, and you can contact me directly at elaine at gofarconsulting.com. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Thank you, Sharon, for your intellectual um, presence and, and knowledge. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome, Elaine. You're very welcome. So we were just popping off to just see how to finish off the conversation when Sharon said, oh, but I've got a great success story to share. So Sharon, share your success story. Okay. Thank you, Elaine. Yes. Um, I had a client that did get a registered trademark and they own a restaurant business in Oakland, in fact, and they, they, you know, they got their, their trademark and the logo and uh, they were just running their business just fine. And all of a sudden on Instagram, they discovered another company in Venezuela was exactly copying their logo and their name on Instagram. Wow. But because they had a registered trademark, they went to Instagram, they just went and filed a complaint in the online platform and said, here, we've got the proof, we've got this registered trademark. And Instagram took the other competitor down. That was all they had to do was show they had the registered trademark. Lovely. Versus like, yeah, if they had filed, you know, litigation is so expensive. Yeah. And not sometimes only you can keep it simple and just prove that you are who you say you are. Exactly. And for just such a short, small fee and a little bit, that gives you so much protection. Yep. And it's such a strong foundation, which is so important. I mean, our time is valuable at the best of times. But when we're starting out in business or looking to make those branding um, sort of alterations so that we seem as all, all the same and everything that we do, then that's where the trademark, I think, is so valuable and can, as you say, shut someone down on Instagram that's trying to copy what you do. Exactly. Because if they didn't have that, Instagram would have done nothing. Yeah. So. Yeah. So very, very powerful. So yes. another little thread there to the conversation and uh, definitely have a look and see how's your business doing? What have you got that is something that could be potentially trademarked? And if it's not, Sharon will tell you. So just reach out and find out. All right. <laughs> Thank Bye, you. everyone. Bye-bye.